Norm Nathan's Vault of Silliness, where the comedy never stops, has quite the show in store for you today. July 5th, 1994 is the date that gives us what I will call 50 Minutes of Madness. It's a puntastic dumb birthday game that includes plenty of attempts at humor that initially fall flat on their face, yet rise like a deranged phoenix from the comedy ashes to be as ridiculous as you could imagine. And if you can't imagine, then let me thank you for being here. You're my kind of people. Please like, subscribe, and share so we can bring such legendary broadcasting to the masses. Let's remind folks how it was done and should be done again. The cast of characters playing the game are as follows. Ken from Pennsylvania, first-time caller and player. Barbara in Framingham, uh, or not. Patrick in Quincy, uh, no, maybe not because he was not properly vetted, vaccinated, or approved through official channels. Roger from Southbridge, who owns an indie record label, Apostrophe Records. I'm on the phone, and there's mention of the grueling tests I passed to become a producer. Emilio Morata playing and producing and leaving for San Diego. <laughs> Jack Hart in traffic, who's soaring on the wings of love. And Rod, the WBZ security guard, calling in from the front desk where he's protecting us from 'er ne'er-do-wells. Birthdays for the fifth. Julie Nixon Eisenhower. Huey Lewis. Rich Goose Gossage. Smoking fastballs and mustaches. Robbie Robertson. Then we have to move to July 6th. For Nancy Reagan... Pat Paulson and his hangdog look, and Burt Ward. You'll be scratching your head at the amount of knowledge dispensed in this one. Did you ever wonder how Goose Gossage got his nickname? You'll hear about the few places where there's a five-day waiting period to buy a ski mask. How do you hold a bat? Why does George Westinghouse allow this insanity to air every week? And an age-old question is answered. Just what is the main criterion used in selecting players for the dumb birthday game? And just you hang on for the revelation as to what tonight's prize package includes. 50 Minutes of Madness begins now. Okay, we're playing the dumb birthday game, and that's always an exciting moment because everything comes to a stop. When we play the dumb birthday game, you'll be surprised. Look around. The barbecue the people stop their barbecues right now. There's nothing happening anyplace because all our ears are tuned to us. Let me introduce the people who will be playing the game, uh, which is a quite a simple premise. What we do is I tell you who was born today. Of course, we're now into Tuesday, July 5th. And you tell me uh, how old they are, people who are born on July 5th. Thank you very much. Let's see. We've got Ken, who's out in Pennsylvania, who's playing the game with us. Hi, Ken. Good morning, Norm. I imagine, boy, you must be just so darn excited about uh, this. I'm just so thrilled. I'm, this is the first time we've ever spoken, too. And we've never spoken before, no. even up to this very moment? I heard you mention that you were looking for players. Not sure. And I figured, oh, what the hey, give Norm a call. Maybe I'll get in. And you did. Yeah. It's America's great success story. Yeah. Well, you, you, an immigrant to the United States, are finally are playing the game, yeah. even though you've been in this country only a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make those things up to make it sound more interesting than it really is. Oh, we're, you're not too far off. I've just landed on this planet a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh, I see. Where, where in Pennsylvania are you? Uh, we're about... 50 miles south of Pittsburgh. Okay, well, that's great. Let me let me introduce you to some other players who will be playing along with you, like Barbara, the very lovely Barbara in Framingham. Hello, Barbara. I have a feeling this isn't Barbara. Are you there, Barbara? Okay, I guess we missed that one then. There's somebody, there's somebody, who else, is somebody else on this line? Hello. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Patrick from Quincy. What's your name? Patrick from Quincy. Okay, now, you, ha- you haven't talked with uh, you haven't talked with, uh, uh, with Emilio, have you, about hey, playing Mike, the dumb birthday game? Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to have to get rid of you because we haven't, you haven't gone through the proper sources, nor have you got your vaccination shots or your visa. So we'll go on to... Uh, 
<laughs> Pat, I got through you, saying. Roger in the Southbridge. Hi, Roger. 23. Do I win? Do I win? <laughs> what did you say? 23? 23. Do I win? You win. You win a tactless, oh. uh, tacky prize. You don't know what it means to me. You don't know. This is so great. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you. Uh, do you work in a radio station down there? Um, No, but I, I was listening. I, I know the guy that uh, I, it was about what? Like, um, there's somebody here that I know from Southbridge that called you like about a year ago. Was, was he working for the, because I know you have a station down there. Yeah, I'm, I I own a record company, so I know who he is. Oh, I see. Okay, you, a record, you own a record company. Yes. Now, what is that? What does that mean? I Well, I started a an indie record label called Apostrophe Records. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, are you doing okay? Um, I'm only in debt to a certain degree. Because so. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a tough business to be in. I, I don't need to tell you that. Yeah, I mean, um, I I started, I was in a band and I started a record company because I was just helping out a lot of friends' bands that I, I was dealing with at the time. So it's, we're all kind of working to help each other out. Well, good luck to you. I wish you the very best. And, and the name of the company again is what? The Apostrophe Records. Apostrophe. And my vice president of the, of the record company is my best friend, Joanne, who who called me up about 20 minutes ago and said, I dare you to call and get on the dumb birthday game. Wow. <laughs> well, good for her. That's great. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're playing the game with us. Oh, yeah, I'll, I just mentioned the name of uh, somebody who's has the birthday, of course, and you guess the age. And from then on, we just take off in such wild, wonderful conversation that it makes the game just so darn much fun. Or, so, or it can be very boring, I suppose, too. But if you guess the most number of birthdays correctly, get closest to the ages of these people, and then you win a prize, and I guarantee you it is totally worthless, useless, and tacky. So a lot of people are excited about that. But I wish you the, the very best on your uh, record uh, label, because that's a, that's a tough business, and I hope you uh, that'd be lovely if you succeed. I definitely wish, wish the Curtain Society luck on their upcoming tour that will be at the Middle East in Boston on the 22nd of July. Thank you. How nicely you got that <laughs> plug in. Just sneaked it in, so, so just so darn nice. Okay, we have Tony, of course. It's uh, Tony Nesbitt uh, from the WBC production staff. And uh, to be a member of the WBC production staff mean, means that you have to be carefully picked. Uh, you have to go through a terrible series of uh, auditions and, all, and questioners and all, all that kind of stuff to make it through. And what else? Grueling Grueling, uh, yeah, I, oh. I, 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 my, my adjective wasn't too good. Awful. Grueling test is good. And you passed those tests, Tony, yeah. and yeah. you came out to be a, a producer. You're a producer. Yep. A WBZ producer. Mm -hmm. And you my must... wallet reflects it. <laughs> and I was about to say how proud, how, or as we say, how proud you are. Oh, very proud. If I can only cash some of that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Early retirement. We we also have, of course, we have Emilio, uh, who's also a member of the uh, production staff here, Emilio Murata. I'm not proud, no. <laughs> you're not proud at all of this. No, I'm not proud that my wallet's empty, also. Because you're, you're so you're, you're so lacking in pride that <laughs> yes. in a couple of weeks or so you're taking off. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. He's going to San Diego. Imagine anybody leaving Boston for San Diego. I you, could. You know what what's going on in my head. You, you must you must have lost all touch with your senses, I would say. I think that's the craziest thing that's, I've ever heard. Norm, if I could uh, stick my own plug in, I'd like to uh, uh, say hello to the Costello family out in Reading where we had a little uh, Fourth of July party. And this, if I want to describe this household, uh, they're kind of the community household where the whole neighborhood comes over. It's one of those houses, you oh, know, like everyone. They're kind of the meeting point for the neighborhood. Sounds you know, nice. so they're very... They're a very good host. They're very congenial, and uh, they, they give themselves to the neighborhood. So we had a great time over there today. And I just want the to say how problem is they charge a cover charge, but yeah, you know. but it's a respectable cover charge, so <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> no, that's really very nice. The Costellos in Reading. Yes, that's nice. You didn't have to run into Gary Lapierre, did you? Because he lives in Reading too. No, but uh, actually, the guy's house I was at does. Gary's trees. He does a tree service for Gary. Oh, oh really? Yeah, he says, I do all his trees. <laughs> oh, I see. Sometimes <laughs> people brag about that stuff and they say, 
I happen to trim. I have trimmed <laughs> Gary's trees. And that has a whole different meaning. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we have a, let's see. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack Hart. Yes. Well, it's nice to have you aboard with oh, us also, too. This is an all-star cast here, Ooh. too. Jack, Jack uh, is not a WBZ producer, but he is a WBZ 24-hour traffic network reporter, mm -hmm. which uh, doesn't carry as much stature as being a no, producer. No, not at all. But, but it is, uh, it is, it's impressive. It's it, up there. It'll get you a date, <laughs> yeah. you know, a blind yeah. date at a party. Uh, I don't know about that. but <laughs> Hey, Jack. Yeah? Are you soaring on the wings of love? Uh, oh, absolutely. You betcha. <laughs> I, I just love that commercial. I appreciate you doing that, too, well, with, the, with the zeal and vigor that you did it. Well, you know, if you can't do things with zeal and vigor, <laughs> vigor what, what can you do? That's correct. I was in a restaurant one time. The waitress asked me if I wanted that on my salad. Sure. <laughs> one of the, one of the <laughs> zeal dressing Zeal and vigor. Offering. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> zeal and vigor? Well, sure. Yeah. Thing. Would you like peppercorn? Would you like Italian dressing? Would you like Thousand Isles? Or would you like zeal and vigor? Zeal and vigor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is I, that, uh, that locale? Fat yeah, we have we have yeah we have light uh, light zeal and vigor, <laughs> uh, which is really nice. And also, uh, they play uh, Middleton quite often for the uh, parent teachers organization. Really, the team of uh, zeal and vigor. Yeah, we're <laughs> well, way, well, way back to vaudeville. Well, that's right. We're just getting caught up with vaudeville in my town. I exactly. understand that zeal and vigor opened up for Robert from Everett. Robert and Everett. No, that's, 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 that's they right. like do like an animal act or something. Well, Norm, you, you know their second cousin, don't you, Zip and Vigor? No, I didn't know that. Yes. No, I had no idea about that. No, not at all. I had not even the vaguest notion, or have I ever heard of that? Never, never. Now you do. Okay. We have a Rod, who's our security guard, is guarding us at the front desk. He's on the line with us now, and he's, uh, he's keeping terrorists in ski masks, bloody ski masks, from invading the lobby and moving their way in here, capturing all of us and keeping us under their deadly, bloody control. Why am I glad I'm on the phone? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm glad you're far away. Huh? Why, why isn't there a five-day waiting period to buy a ski mask? There is. <laughs> Uh, oh, I mean, not everywhere. There isn't everywhere. I see. There isn't Kingsboro, <laughs> Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and Sault Ste. Marie, with, um, wherever that is. Well, good morning, Noah. <laughs> oh, will you stay out of there? <laughs> okay, good to talk to you, Rod. I guess that's our lineup, and it uh, looks like a really swell lineup, too. So we'll play the dumb birthday game by my telling you one person, beginning with uh, Julie Nixon Eisenhower, who was born July 5th. And, of course, I can't tell you the year, but she's the daughter of former President Richard and Pat Nixon. And uh, she's also, of course, the granddaughter would she be the granddaughter of um, Ike, Ike Eisenhower? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Be the yeah. granddaughter. Uh, not the granddaughter. I guess he is her husband, who she uh, is, uh, is, uh, is an Eisenhower. Who are we talking about? Who knows? <laughs> We're talking about Julie uh, Nixon Eisenhower. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, Ken, how old do you think uh, Julie is today? Let's see. Julie Nixon. Julie, that's the one. Okay. Um... Uh, I'd say she's about fifty-two. Fifty-two, and that's the uh, that's kind of like kind of like the opening pitch. That's the first guess of the of the game, and yeah. it's always exciting because all the kids usually cheer and are excited about getting that underway. So was that a strike or a ball? I well, we I can't tell you until I we get all the guesses in. Can you imagine if the umpires of Major League Baseball did that? Well, I can't tell you until the fifth pitch. If that was yeah, ball yeah, four yeah. or a strike. <laughs> that's, why, that's why this game is more exciting than baseball. I see. Oh, yeah. Major League Baseball can't even see the ball. I didn't hear what you said, Ken, but I bet it was really witty. <laughs> okay. Oh, we could tempt anyway. <laughs> okay. Barbara in Framingham. No, I don't want to say we. No, we didn't have Barbara, did we? We lost Barbara. In adventure. Oh, that's right. Roger in uh, Southbridge, the uh, the record company. What do you think? How old do you think Julie Nixon Eisenhower is? I think 47. 47. Okay. Tony, do you want to sing for uh, Roger? He might put you on his label. Yeah, maybe. You have a uh, a particular clientele you usually sign? 
uh, um, really successful clientele that'll make me a lot of money. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, well, I yeah, right. so Roger, be, even, yeah, Roger <laughs> before said he wasn't learning losing too much money, so he wasn't too much in debt. Well, well Roger, did, rock or hip hop or anyone, you'll sign anyone. Well, it's, I, I do a lot of uh, swirly English sounding rock. Okay, swirly English sounding rock from America, though. Uh -huh. You're gonna be from America, but and it has to be swirly. Yeah, very swirly. In English though. If you can, if you can define swirly in musical terms, then you get yourself a Ferry cross the Mersey. Anything like that? Excuse me. A little faster, Jack. He didn't say tipsy, Jack. He said swirly. Swirly. Oh. You mind if I spit up a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I am Actually, getting kind of shit. Sort of stuff too. Uh, okay, Tony, how old do you think? Well, Ju uh, who is she married to? Uh, she's married to uh, Mr. Eisenhower. Thank you very much. Julie Nixon Eisenhower is married to a guy named Eisenhower, who is actually uh, Ike Eisenhower's granddaughter. A grandson. <laughs> Our grandson. All right, okay, Ike's grandson. Yeah. I forget his first name, ma'am. Um, Mr. Dwight D. Yes. Yeah, oh, his, name, his name is Mr. Eisenhower. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 48. 40? No. No, 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 yeah. no, no. 48 is the yes or no? Yeah, yeah, 48. 48, okay. And Emilio, what do you think? I got a good vibe when uh, Ken said 52, and then but then Tony 48 split it kind of, so I'm going to go 50. 50, right in the middle of both of them. Right in the middle. Okay, Jack, what do you say? Hmm. 49. 49. That was my other answer. Okay, you were going to guess that. Yeah, that was the one I was... The second on. choice. Yeah. Okay, Rod, what do you say? I think I'll say 48 also. 48 also? Okay. The, uh, actually, she's, four, she's 46, so you're all, you're all very close. Oh. Uh, the uh, closest uh, has, was Roger. Uh, uh, let me see, yeah, because he said 47. Yeah, yeah so I mean, Roger wins that. If you keep winning, Roger, you get a tasteless uh, kind of tacky prize, maybe one of your own records. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't that be a disappointment? Ouch. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, that would be too nice. As a matter of fact, if I may correct that answer, uh, that would be too nice because your records certainly are not tacky or tasteless you know, or worthless. You know, Norm, I believe uh, yeah. Ro Roger, your vice president, was Joanne, right? Yeah. yeah. She played the game, didn't she? Yes, she did. Okay. I remember a couple of weeks ago where she said, oh, no, I work for a record company where my best friend's the president. Uh, sorry. How did you get to be vice president of a record company, we asked. Now, now guys, bef since it's an all-male panel, Norm really likes to give out some really good prizes. I saw him clipping his toenails earlier, so I don't know if you guys really want to try hard tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed. Cause I'll talk to you later, guys. <laughs> No, it's not bad. It's uh, they're framed. It's uh, framed in a, in, a, in, a, in, in, in kind of a scrapbook, dipped in bronze. Yeah, I know. There are a whole bunch of toenails, including. Are they hand signatured and numbered? Oh, they're numbered. Yes, this is a first edition. He paints on the tips of them. Complete scenes from the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Oh, well, see, now you're being silly. See, now you're being foolish. Okay, let's go to Huey Lewis. Oh, God. Born Huey Anthony Craig the Third hmm. in New York City. Did you know that? His name was Hugh Anthony Craig? I wonder where the Lewis came yeah. from. I don't know. He made the Lewis just came. He just formed his San Francisco six-man band, The News, in 1980. Of course, biggest hits were The Power of Love uh, from the uh, film Back to the Future and Stuck With You. I haven't seen him on uh, lately. Has he done anything lately? Yeah, his last record was uh, a record of cover song from Motown. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, what yeah. the heck was it called? Four. And he's been um, he's been making like little cameos in uh, movies, a lot of appearances in movies and stuff. He was in like shortcuts. Oh yeah. And uh, what else did he did I see him in? What's the name of the new record? It's, it's a play on a historical phrase like four score and like four songs and I don't know seven tunes ago, something like that. I don't know. 
Bush. I think it's called I Regret That I Have Only One Record to uh, give lose from my country company. or give to my from country company. Uh, yeah. from right. my company. <laughs> uh, something of that nature. That's no, but not he's, bad. I think but, I'll title my debut album. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's, uh, he's he used to be on MTV a whole lot. Now. Oh, yeah. And, of course, I'm an avid follower of MTV, having watched it, you know, 24 <laughs> hours a day whenever I'm not here. Yeah. Where did you follow it? No. Uh, I just follow it wherever it'll go. Okay. I just follow right after it and blow in its ear. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I haven't seen Huey Lewis uh, for a very long time. Hasn't been much to see, that's why. I guess so. I okay. guess you could say he's on the... Uh, I'm too busy watching those girls on the beach dancing. Uh, in the, uh, Channel 62. Oh, the 60, <laughs> Channel 62 is a whole lot of fun, too. That's a whole lot of thing. Anyway, let's start with you, uh, Rod. Uh, how, how old is uh, Huey Lewis? I'll say uh, 44. Uh, Rod says 44. And Jack? Hmm, 43. 43. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you do that? Hmm, that's right. Hmm. Just sort of vibrate everything between the jaw and the middle of the chest. Jaw in the middle of the chest. While mm. passing air. Mm. While passing air? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're I'm glad you're all, all alone up there on the fruit tower. <laughs> I want to be sitting next alone. to you while you're passing air. <laughs> <laughs> Emilio, what do you say? Hmm. Forty two. 42. I mean, you says 42. Does that sound like Barry White right there? Okay. No. Do that again. No. No, no. Doesn't that sound, sound right? like the door in the Adams family. <laughs> yeah. I know it was something. You sounded like you were passing air, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I was. I was vibrating everything, though. <laughs> uh, Tony, what do you say? 43. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> And uh, Roger? I say 41. 41. Roger says 41. And Ken says? Hmm. I'd say <laughs> he, he seems to me like he's a little bit older than he looks. I'd say he's about 45. 45. Now, Norm, did you notice the difference between Ken's hmm? Ken was a hmm up high in the scale, and Jack is hmm. There was a difference there, wasn't there? The yeah. Base, hmm. And also... <laughs> Well, I've been sitting here all day, and my shorts are kind of riding up. Uh, I think, and then the soprano. I think, I think we can end this whole thing right, right here, folks. Huey Lewis, hold on a minute. I have an announcement to make. And it affects all your lives in absolutely no degree whatever. Huey Lewis actually is 43. Oh, yes. And so we have Jack Hart, who said 43, and Tony said 43 also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And exciting, so. <laughs> What's that, please? I wasn't sure if he said 43. I couldn't remember. No, yeah, you said 43, and Jack Hart said 43. Right. That's correct. And that's how old he is. How about Rick? Rick? Uh, Rich Goose Gossage. Oh. The Goose. Yan Yankee relief pitcher. Is he still pitching or is he all through? Actually, no. Who was he pitching I with? I think his uh, Goose has been cooked. No, he was still uh, hurling. I know he was pitching up to last year when this book was published. Yeah, yeah. I think he did start out this year. I, 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 there's a possibility he might be on a roster. Who did, who did he pitch with last year, does it say? It says, uh, no, it does not say. That, uh, yeah, New York Yankees. Uh, he was with well, that's, that's where he made his fame. Yeah. But well, then he moved on. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. But he he was the one with the fiery fastball. I've seen him pitch. He's got the big mustache. Big mustache and that ball. I mean, it smokes. Gosh <laughs> darn, it really smokes. You can hardly even see it, Norm. It's like a little BB. That's right. Suddenly, boy, you know what it's like to be at the plate and what Goose Carson just thrown? What's it like, Norm? Boy, it's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> I have a way of summing life up into simple phrases that really tell it as it is. Okay, Goose Gossage. Uh, we'll start with you, Emilio. How old is Goose Gossage? He's old. <laughs> um, I was wondering how he got his nickname, Norm. Is it from? Is it from his like? You know what geese do? Is it? Does he, does he do things like that? 
What do geese do? I mean, you ever been on a golf course? What do they do? What geese they, do? They pinch human beings in the butt. Is that what <laughs> geese do? <laughs> no, they poop all over they, the place. I, oh, I, well, that's, so does everybody else. Yeah, but I, I was wondering if goose like <laughs> yeah. did it on golf courses and stuff. That's how I get the name goose. Where, wherever they happen to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I they mean, make themselves right at home, and wherever they're, they, 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 they deal with that. No, but I'm not talking about goose now, geese. I'm talking about goose, the man. Oh, goose. Oh, 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 how, how did he get the name? Is that how he got his name? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, like like pooping all over the golf course. There you go. <laughs> Would you care to guess his age, or do you I'm just sure want to keep rambling? You know? <laughs> well, yeah, Goss, Goss, yeah, Gossler, yeah. Gossling, exactly whatever. Sure. Thank you, Tony. Thank You're you for welcome. clearing up. No I mean, no, no one I didn't have an answer. I can tell you the definition of deed, no, no, but I won't give into that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate okay. that. I'm going to say goose gassage, gasling gassages. Would you, would you cut that out and would you guess the guy's age? 40, <laughs> holy God, how long is this going to go on? 44. <laughs> Thank, thank you so much, boy. That's a, what did he say? He said 44, that's okay. what he said. He didn't say it in English, so that's probably why he didn't spot it. Quaranta cuatro. Roger, how old do you think Goose Gossage is? And no comment, okay? Just give the damn age. Uh, 45, I think. Oh, okay. he's, he's 45. Do, he's, Roger's doing your stick. Uh, Ken, how old? How old? I'd say he's down... Around Oh, my goodness. And 47 is what Ken said, mixed in with all that other stuff. <laughs> okay, Rod, what do you think? <laughs> I was going to say 46. <laughs> That's not a terribly <laughs> funny answer. I don't know I'm why sorry. You're, I'm, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. You're, I'm laughing at the rest of you guys. They're really, oh, really yes. very funny tonight. Because uh, well, we have a kind of an interesting crew. <laughs> they're, me. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> picked uh, for their mental, inst mental instability. Yeah, I yeah. guess that's true. <laughs> Tony, speaking of that, Tony. Yes. <laughs> oh, Tony, how old do you think Goose Gossage is? Well, I don't mean to uh, honk my own horn. Oh. 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 45. 45. Okay, you said that kind of an embarrassment <laughs> in your voice, and who can blame you? Okay, Jack, I imagine you probably have a joke involving gander in there, but I can't think of what it is. Uh, well, uh, neither can I. Uh, <laughs> um, 46. 40, 46. Okay, Goose Gossage who is far from the beak of his career. Oh, that is so oh, awful. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm going to be nauseous. Even, even, oh, oh that was awful. Swan dive. Oh, the swan dive. <laughs> no, no, we're, to, we're on geese. No, I know. Hold, hold, the, hold the swan jokes. Uh, Goose Gossage is 43. Oh, okay. I think Emilio is the closest. He says 44. <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's supposed to be a very bad I think he's impression of a goose. Oh, I, I think it looked like he's blowing his nose on the microphone. It was <laughs> Will, Will Gary Lapierre tries to use that microphone. <laughs> no, it was supposed to be a, a goose, but it's coming out sounding like Felix Unger having one of his attacks. So I'm sorry. Yeah, see, that. we just did the humor on this thing. Now we go along to the next one. You understand that we just did oh, the no, humor. I, didn't, I wasn't trying to be humorous. I just was liking myself to Felix. I'm going to have one of his, <laughs> you know, those attacks he has in the middle of the night. Hey, Emilio, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> what a silly bunch of pooks this is. Wow. Uh, this is terrible. And, and my mother wanted me to be a concert violinist, and I'm sitting here with a bunch of dummies <laughs> saying bad jokes. Robbie Robertson, uh, he played guitar for the band in the 60s and 70s. Their biggest hit was... Uh, the Weight? Up on Cripple Creek. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that was 1969. No, oh my goodness, that goes back. The group backed Bob Dylan for a while. Robbie is in the movies now and toured with Ringo's All-Star Band. 
He's from Toronto, Canada, and uh, weighs in it. <laughs> he weighs in it, <laughs> one eighty, and is wearing these ungodly purple shorts that make him look really ridiculous, yeah, like up on you know, like a sissy. And uh, anyway. Robbie Robertson. Have you guys heard of him? Are you all oh, heard of sure. him? Sure. Matter of fact, yep. just just this past week, I watched a tape of a movie called The Last Waltz, which was like their last concert kind of thing. Fine, fine show. Wasn't it? Is he a good musician? He's a guitar player. A good... uh, yeah, they had a lot of good songs. Okay. You guys are going to have to brief me. This is the kind of stuff I don't know too much about. So that was... Jack, why don't you take the first shot at that? At Robbie Robertson. Oh. Uh, let's see... Uh, uh, uh. Well, I like that's a new one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we all have to pick up on that now, no? Yeah, yeah, we all have, we all gonna do like Jack Hyde does because he's our leader and our role model. Ooh, there you Ooh. go. Ooh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'll have to say uh, <clears throat> he's forty nine. Forty nine. Okay, and uh, Roger, what do you say? I say 46. Roger says 46. And uh, let's see, Rod, what do you say? I'm going to say uh, 51. 51. Okay, and uh, Ken, what do you think? Uh, this has me really fretting. Freddy, oh, 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 you really yes. stuck your neck out on that one. Oh, 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 oh. Wow! I just pluck an answer out of air the minute. Oh, 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 you can really oh, check them. Oh, 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 who asked you? <laughs> oh, me, I did. Oh, I see. Okay, 54. And uh, Tony? Why don't you just get Tar out of here? Uh, oh, get, get Tar out of here. <laughs> oh, gee. All right, I'll jump on the bandwagon. Bandwagon. Oh. <laughs> Norm, you let the guitar joke go? You didn't admonish him for that? Oh, I, I, I'm just going to... I just want, I want to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> really... <laughs> What's the, what's, the, what's the question there, Tony? Oh, uh, the question is, what is 49? <laughs> what is 49? Okay. And uh, Emilio? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> 51. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he is actually 50. Hey. So a lot of you are very close. Emilio said 51. Rod said 51. Tony and Jack. Tony said 49. And that's right, Jack said 49. Big BZ sweep. Big sweep, yeah. big sweep. Okay, the review, <laughs> the, uh, the scores now. We have Tony, Emilio, and Jack all tied with two apiece. Rod and Roger, one apiece. And Ken. With a goose egg. Ken has a goose egg. That's good. Back to that again. Oh, uh, just call me toilet paper. Uh, just call me toilet paper? <laughs> what is that? Don't even tell us what that yeah, means. I don't want to know. Okay, Wednesday, uh, we're going to go to Wednesday's the birthdays now, July 6th. Didn't we do those that this weekend? No, yeah, we did some. Okay. We did some. But, I just uh, want to make sure you're prepared. No, no, I am, because these are the ones we did not do. I don't believe we did Nancy Reagan. No, we did not. We did not do Nancy Reagan. She was born on July 6th. And let me see what it says about uh, Nancy Reagan here. Let's see. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, look what it's... Oh, my. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, she was born Anne Frances Robbins. Did you, you all know that? that that's actually was her name at birth, Anne Frances Robbins. Where did Nancy come from? Uh, Nancy came from Thin Air, I think. Uh, she's married to a guy named Thin Air. Well, well I don't know where that thin enough. No, I guess that was her movie name or something. She well, became Nancy da Davis later on. Yeah, where did the Davis come from? Oh, let's see. Let's let me read this. Oh, she was <laughs> married to a guy with that name. She was adopted by her stepfather. Oh, I see. Her stepfather, Doctor Loyal Davis, hmm. a Chicago wow. neurosurgeon. In 1935, she graduated from Smith College in 1943 and married Ronald Reagan. In 1952. See how you gave us two good of clues there, Norm. 
That's right. He gave you some good good years. Graduated forty three from college. Mm -hmm. Married Ronald Reagan fifty two. Uh, she made eleven movies between nineteen forty nine and nineteen fifty six, including Hellcats of the Navy. <laughs> the only movie that John Williams never made that wrote the score for, and of course she wrote a book called My Turn. Okay, and uh, it's kind of funny to see. Have you seen that Hellcats of the Navy? It's kind of funny to see her and uh, and the Ronald Reagan in the movie. You know, two younger versions of what what they are today. And, and he uh, kept forgetting his lines. I can't remember now. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nancy Reagan, anyway. We'll start with you. Uh, let's see. Tony, how old do you think uh, Nancy Reagan will be on, on July 6th, Wednesday? Okay. All right. <laughs> 72. 72. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, what do you think, Jack? Uh, 74. Uh, 74. Okay, and uh, Roger? I'll go with 72 also. Also, and Ken, what do you say? Well, I'd say 73. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, he's doing shtick. And what do you think? What do you think his age or age would be then? He said 73. Oh, you said 73. I'm sorry. Okay, and... Uh, Emilio? Uh, 72. 72. And Rod? I'm going to go 73. 73. Okay, you're all very, very close. Uh, she's seven, she'll be 71. All right. Oh, oh. Tony. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tony. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tony said 72. Well, she was 21 when she graduated college. She was 20 when she's she graduated. She's a real scholar. Mm, oh, no, no. Rod, Rod said 73. No, Tony and myself said 72. I said 72. What did you say, Rod? I said 73. You said 73. Oh, I'm right, sorry. She's 71. 71. I beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm getting mixed up here. I'm getting terribly mixed up. Would you believe that I would, you? that I would get mixed up? A graduate? I, a graduate of Chelsea High School, getting mixed up? <laughs> Never. No, and being the consummate you. professional, you've, you've uh, hidden that well, and now you've gone on and, like, look, no one even knows you've messed up. You're a wonderful person, Emilio. Okay, so Roger... Tony and Emilio all have uh, game the closest with 72. And that means that uh, Tony's now got three correct answers. Mm. Emilio and Roger, two, and also Jack, two, and Rod, one, and uh, oh, Ken. <laughs> Straighten yourself out, will you? Uh, I've been up for the past. Well, listen to this, these excuses. Listen to this. I've been up since a week ago last Friday. I haven't hardly closed my eyes. And all I've had to eat was uh, a piece of lemon meringue pie and maybe a walnut. <laughs> and so There's how coffee I... and m, &M. <laughs> I see. Okay, Pat Paulson also was born July 6th. Hmm. Pat... <coughs> Excuse me, Pat Paulson. Let's see what I can tell you about him. Is that what you think about him, Norm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every uh, every cough, every movement, every uh, every belch has a meaning. Every subtle subtlety. Yeah. Excuse me. Let's see, Pat Paulson. Why don't I, oh, I'm looking at. Oh, here he is. Uh, born in South Bend, Washington, the non-candidate candidate for president every four years because he appeared on the Smothers Brothers show. He couldn't officially be a candidate. He lost the 1968 election by a paltry 16 or 17 million votes, it says. Anyway, that's uh, comedian Pat Paulson. Ken, what do you think? Uh, about 69. Roger, what do you say? Uh, I'll go 62. And Tony? What year did they lose that election? Uh, 68. Yeah. yeah, that was the year that uh, Nixon. Nixon won, yeah. Yeah, and that was the year that uh, Gene McCarthy was the candidate and uh, was on an anti-Vietnam platform, and that was the year that uh, Robert Kennedy entered the race and was assassinated that year, 68. And, and it was the year Dustin Hoffman did The Graduate, or he did that in 67, maybe. Hmm. Anyway, how old... Hmm. 
61. 61. Okay, Emilio? No, and would Pat Paulson, Paulson's father be called Paul Paulson? No. No? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Paul's son is his last name. Oh, Paul's son. So his father's it. name would be Paul, and he I would see. be Paulson, so his father's name yeah. would be Paul. So they'd all be Paul well, Paulson. Probably somewhere along the line, yeah, Paulson probably would mean the son of Paul. <clears throat> Possibly somewhere along the line. But, what, but when you think of it, is his father's <laughs> name would be just Paul. He would have no last name because Pat would be Paul's son. Correct. Yes, but see. that was... That that stands the reason maybe his father was named Paul also, so he was Paul's son. Why don't you guys? Why don't you guys <laughs> shut up? But what if his name was like Gerald or Fred? Would he be Fredson? Correct. Yes, yeah. yeah, correct. Yes. Geraldson. Yes. <laughs> Anyhow, Norm, I'd say or that if you had a child, would he be Emilio's son? Correct. There you go, Jack. Yes, <laughs> Jackson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why does George Westinghouse allow this thing to continue day after day? No, but I don't you understand. You know why, this. Norm? Yeah? Because he's dead. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I knew there was a logical reason. His machine spun for the last time. No, but I don't understand is why there's not little notes in our in our cubbyhole, male cubbyholes, saying, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Here's your pay raises. I beg your pardon. I don't, why are there no notes like oh, that? Why there are no notes like yeah. that? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that, uh, in the fax machine there are all kinds of notes piling up for George Westinghouse. Yeah. Anyhow, Pat Paulson is sixty-two years old. Now, he's got to be old. Now. He looks older than that. He looks. He he looks like the Wicked Witch of the West back in uh, on. Uh, Wizard of Oz. I'm going to say he's 68. I changed oh, my vote. Si oh, you're changing it 68, you're yeah. saying. Okay. He was old back in the Smothers Brothers show. He always had a kind of a hangdog look. Yeah. He always looked kind of sickly. In fact, to tell you the truth, looking at him made me kind of sick myself. I can't bear even to think of his so face. So to the point that you got sick of looking at him, too. I was, yeah, that's yeah. true. Actually, he did something very funny in one of the early Letterman shows. He uh, came out and explained to Letterman that he had been practicing, you know, metaphysics and things for quite some time and had actually learned to levitate. And he could levitate over water. Water, and they had a large tank of water and he climbed up on top of it and he prepared himself for a few minutes and he was going to levitate out on top of the water and he stepped out and fell straight in. <laughs> <laughs> of course, all with a straight face, Jim. All with a straight face, yeah. But then he kept on trying throughout the rest of the show. <laughs> okay. Uh, how, old, how old do you think he is? We'll be on Wednesday. Who, who you asking? Uh, Jack, I'm, oh, a, I'm, a, I'm asking <laughs> Jack. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> he's going to be 72. <laughs> 72. Oh, oh, you see, you can't see me scratching my head, so I have to, like, do the same thing. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't know what I'm laughing. I'm thinking of him dropping into the water. Eleven dead. It sounds like a funny idea. Jack, if you scratch really hard, we maybe we can hear you scratch. Like, mm -hmm. can you hear that? That's me scratching. How's that? Yeah, I can hear that. Oh, Thank you. Go. Thank you. Rod, you have a red rack. <laughs> will, you, will you stop? Rod, how old do you think Pat Paulson will okay, be? Okay. Uh, see, I'm trying to remember what he looks like. Uh, he looks very sickly. He's a sickly Sick. looking guy. Yeah, he's yeah, like, he looks yeah. a little drowned, like a drowned rat. <laughs> I'm going to say 70. 70. Okay. Yeah. Okay, actually, Pat Paulson on Wednesday, on July 6th, will be 67. Yes. Oh. Yes, so we do have a meteor said 68. And uh, Ken's, Ken has, no, Ken said 69, but I'm <laughs> sorry, Ken. I almost had you in the scoring column, but you just missed out. No, I guess, uh, no, it's just Emilio. Emilio now ties Tony. Uh, three apiece. My uh, good, oh, no, no, Tony has four. No, Tony got three last time, didn't he? No, no, oh, you, no I'm waiting a minute. You, no, Emilio has four. Yes. So Emilio has four and Tony has three. <laughs> Okay. Ooh. Yeah, no, me. I just, I, I didn't even see that. You, you. No fair. They have the answers written on their hands. No, they don't. Actually, neither one is. Well, no, I know. I've got the on this piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, let, we'll have to. Let's see. We'll try another one. Bert Ward. 
Oh, is that uh, Robin? That's right, yeah. Played Robin, the boy wonder in the Batman TV series. And uh, let's see, it would be kind of interesting to know how old he's going to be now. And now, isn't that interesting, Norm, that on the show he was, bat he was um, whatever the guy's name was there, Bruce Wayne's ward. He was Bruce Wayne's wood? And his name is Bert Ward. 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 Yeah. Oh, ward. He was the ward of the court. Uh, Bruce yeah. Wayne took care of him. Oh, I and see. His name, right. and his, and his name, name was Bruce. Ward. Yeah, yeah. Well, isn't that interesting? That's that is, have to explain everything to you. No? Yeah, that is well. Andy I'm, found him in a big section of a hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must you must be in the medical business to describe it in that manner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. A ward, you know, a ward, as we learned in medical school, is <laughs> a big section in a hospital place. That's right. They named the whole. They named the whole section after the hospital. Where are you? Well, I'm in the Burt Ward. You know. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. We're gonna start with Rod on this one. Uh, Burt Ward. How old do you think? Well, I say he's about forty-six. Forty-six says Rod and Jack. Hmm, forty-eight. Jack says forty-eight, and uh, Emilio says. 47. You were scratching your head again, weren't you, you devil? <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> Would you sweep all that stuff off the console now, please? Oh. <laughs> we are already getting low on this thing, aren't we? Huh? I hope nobody's having breakfast while they're listening. <laughs> Tony, what do you think? Well, I wish we could ward off the bad jokes, but... Jeez. Oh. Oh, uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pardon me? 47. 47. You're going to stick with Emilio's answer. Oh, am I? Um, well, Emilio said 47. Well, and you said wonder, so. Okay. And I'm a the, winner, Norm. I'm a winner. And Emilio is a, is a boy wonder also. And Roger, what do you think? <laughs> uh, oh, wait a second, Norm. Hold on now. <laughs> I don't want people to get the wrong idea here. So you dress you know. up in tights. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean any of whatever oh, you're I thinking. See. I didn't mean that at all. <laughs> Hang around in a cave with a guy wearing a, wearing a leather mask. <laughs> <laughs> it does make you a little what suspicious, time. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Uh, why didn't they notice Batgirl? She's in that tight leather outfit, and no one even really gives two hoots about it. Yeah, they weren't hanging around with her, were they? No, I mean I'd be I'd be you know partying up with Batgirl all the time. I'd have her on the back of my motorcycle. I had yes. questions about the commissioner and Chief O'Hara. That's that's what I had questions. About. <laughs> that relationship was a little odd. Yeah. Do you, you know do you know how you how, how you hold a bat. <laughs> by the tips of its wings? <laughs> yes, right. Generally by the tips of its wings. <laughs> I see. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Because they asked that of, uh, I believe it was Wade Boggs last year, and that was his answer. Uh -huh. I made that up. Very witty, that Wade. What, we, yeah, witty Wade, that's right. Very yeah. close to Ward. Close to Ward, yeah. Oh. Witty Wade and Ward. And uh, I use them for their law services, so all of them. <laughs> uh, anyway, Roger, how old do you think uh, Bert Ward is? I would like to say that Bert Ward would be 49 years old. <laughs> is that Elephant Boy from Stern? <laughs> oh, oh Howard, hello, Howard. Okay, kid. goes on blah. <laughs> okay, that's very nice. That's really very, very Thank nice. You. Now finish your oatmeal and shut up. Okay, Ken, what do you think? Oh, pal, bam, I think he's 47. <laughs> oh, bam. See, now Ken's going to jinx us. He's going with us. He's going with the rest of us. That's right, yeah, and he's... Uh, I know a winner when I hear one. No, you're very, you, you, you were wise to go with him, except... We got Jack Hart, who's who's hit it right on the head when he said forty-eight. Oh. But the rest of you were so incredibly close. I, I, it's hard to imagine that Brett Ward is well up in his forties. It's he's, hard to imagine. He's that, fat now. Have you seen him lately, Norm? No, I'm not. No, when did you see him last? I, I saw him on seen him in years. He, I he, saw him on like a Vicky or something like that, and he's like. He's got, like, chipmunk cheeks, and he doesn't look like he was ever an Avenger of Justice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but Batgirl's looking real hot. She can, she'd look good in that leather suit now. Is she, have you seen her lately? Yeah. Um, 
they were in Chicago for a women of broadcasting thing, and I caught a video clip of it on like uh, CNN or something. And she's still smoking. So what did she have yeah. to do with women in broadcasting? Yeah, really. Oh, she's got her own show now. No, old women, old women from TV shows. You know that showed a positive influence on the society. Riding a motorcycle in a little leather suit. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, Norm, I have to ask you, who was your favorite cat woman? Kit. Was it Eartha Kitt, Julie Newmeyer? Oh, Julie uh, Newmeyer. Julie Newmeyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Lee Merriweather also. Yeah. Lee Merriweather was she did in the movie. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer in the movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah Michelle Pfeiffer in that, yeah. Well, we're talking about, you know, they're back in the old oh, TV yeah, series. No, the yeah. TV no one could purr better than yeah, that. Yeah, that, yeah, that couldn't that, be Julie Newmar for legs up to her neck. That's true. That's true. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the, uh, they're, they're doing reruns, are they not, right oh, now yeah. on, uh, on the old Batman series? Sure, Batman's series. always on. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, Lee Merriweather, everyone knew she would sell it to Barnaby Jones. That's why nobody ever gave her any credit. I beg your pardon? I don't I don't know what that means. Is that, you're being serious when you say that. Yeah, she she went over to Barnaby Jones. Son of a gun. What a, what a nasty thing. At least she stayed be... the, the crime-fighting type. You know, specialization. Would have joined up with a vet or something. Well, then she then she became the Lily Munster in the New Monsters. Oh, hmm. I think we've come to the end of the game. <laughs> folks. Yeah, and the uh, the winner would be Emilio, who had the the four correct answers, and second would be Tony, okay. uh, and uh, Jack, who also had three. Wow. So you guys are tied, and Roger uh, had two. And uh, Rod had one, and uh, O'Ken. Ken. Yeah, Ken. No, Ken was uh, was added to some interesting comments he to did. the program, even though he fell flat on his face and looked really stupid <laughs> in the guessing of the ages. <laughs> no, 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 for no, Tony. He didn't do an elephant boy impression live on. Live radio. <laughs> now, now for uh, Tony's sake, can you can you just tell me what I won? No, you haven't won anything because you no. work here. Yeah, we. Why is it for my thing? I don't get a pen. <laughs> no, you get those no, no, you know, you get no pens. Why? You, what is your kind You've of? You've got to add that. You've got to add the pad. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're trying to cause problems. I you in trouble. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm leaving town, Norm. So you know, you don't care. <laughs> yeah. You don't care. You'll be out. You'll, got nothing to lose. That's right. He'll be out in San Diego. What yeah. does he care about? I'm <laughs> facing the music here. Yeah, but he's got relatives out there in that that part of the world. Watch us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, th this is the exciting part of the program where I thank everybody for taking part in this cockamamie game. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, putting their reputations up for sale like Ken in Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, Ken. Good to talk with you. Uh, thanks a lot, Norman. Would it be possible for me to get an autographed picture of you to add to my collection of famous DJs? <laughs> famous DJs, eh? And I certainly am that. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Amelia will take the call right this moment, take your name and address, and I'll send one out to you. And again, it was uh, I got a picture of me taken just just after the uh, firing on Fort Sumter. And that's the most recent thing, because Westinghouse doesn't take too many pictures too too easily. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Roger. All right, uh, no, you. not just Ken, it is. And uh, thank you, Roger. I appreciate you playing the game. Take care. And uh, Tony, of course, you're always <clears throat> such a such a joy. Oh, thanks, Norm. You really feel that way? I really do. Oh, because I don't. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And uh, thank you to Jack. We'll talk to you in a few minutes. Oh, thank you. And uh, Rod, keep protecting against those those terrorists with the ski masks. I got to go now because we're we're just about up to the news uh, here at the WBZ. Boston is where we are. It's four o'clock, kids. It's hard to pick favorite episodes because they all have their own standout moments, but this one was a heck of a lot of fun to listen to. I hope you laughed out loud, groaned, and shook your head and contemplated, just as Norm had, about how this was allowed to air over and over again every week. I'm thrilled we got away with it, and just so proud to have been a part. The thank you list is a long one, so let's close the vault and ride the radio waves home. For all the cat women. Eartha, Julie, Lee, and Michelle. Swirly, English-sounding rock made in America. The comedy duo of zeal and vigor. Norm's legal counsel, Witty, Wade, and Ward. The Channel 62 Dancing Girls. George Westinghouse. 
Rodney the WBZ overnight security guard, the San Diego-bound Emilio Marauder, and his friends, the Costellos from Reading, the vibrating, air-passing, leader and role model, Jack Hart, and the man who was clearly questioning his career choice during this show, Norm Nathan. I'm the mentally unstable Tony Nesbitt.